Hi, I'm B.B. King. You know the guy that plays Lucille? I sing the blues. There's urban blues. There's Chicago blues. There's city blues. And of course, uh, there's B.B. King blues.
hanging around my house when I'm not at home. I said, I don't want a soul, baby. Hanging around my house when I'm not at home. I don't want you to answer the door for nobody, baby. Oh, when you're home and you know you're all alone. I don't want your sister coming by because the girl should talk too much. If she just have to come out and see us, tell her to meet us Sunday, Sunday night at the cellar. I don't want a soul bitch hanging around my house when I'm not at home. I don't want you to answer the door for nobody, baby. Oh, when you're home and you know you're all alone. Now you might feel a little sick, baby, and you know you're home all alone. I don't want the doctor at my house. So you just suffer, suffer, suffer till I. Now 
that you got me. You act like you're ashamed. You don't act like my baby. You just use it my name. But I tell you I'm going to handle the money. And I don't want no back talk. You don't like what I'm doing. Pick up your fingers. Gotta be crazy, baby. Stuff's gonna be out of your mind. Long as I'm paying the bills, I'm paying the cost. City blues, and then they say Chicago blues. Well, kind of confuses me just a little bit. Some types of blues is more traditional than others, and I happen to be one of those guys that like to try and play just a little bit of all of it. Well, for instance, if you if you came up in Mississippi, in the area where I came up. Usually on a Saturday night, you might hear something go like this. started to try and play, I guess, when I was about 12. And I remember getting a guitar when I was uh, 12. That cost me $15, and I was making $15 a month at that time. My boss bought it for me. And I used to hear um, a lot of the people that was playing in the area where I grew up using a bottleneck. And it sounds somewhat like... Um, what we used to call a Hawaiian steel guitar. And then I started trying to play like them, but I got stupid fingers. I could never get my finger to, you know, slide like so. I had a cousin named Booker White, and he used to put a bottleneck on his hand, and man, he'd almost make me cry, just send uh, beautiful feelings all through me, you know, listen to him play, but I could never do it. I started then to trill my hand like, like this. And my ears would say that this sounds somewhat like the slide to me. And this is very unorthodox because usually a uh, person that trills the guitar, usually I see him doing you know, like, I can't even do that either. You know, like that. And I kept trying to do it and uh, Finally, it started to sound more and more like, uh, well, like the steel, like having a bar on your finger or something. So I think that's what started me to play as I play today. There was no course charted out, no. Uh, could you share with us some of the circumstances leading up to, say, your first big break in music? Mine started after leaving my home state of Mississippi, coming into Memphis, Tennessee, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I was a disc jockey, and I used to do like most disc jockeys do, clown around on radio a bit. And uh, the reason why they hired me as a disc jockey because I could usually make people believe me, not because I could talk. <laughs> but I played live for 10 minutes. I had um, a little trio um, consist of myself and pianist and drums. 
and we would play 10 to 15 minutes a day uh, on the air there. And some um, scouts that was looking for new talent heard me. And uh, I made uh, four sides for a company out of Nashville, Tennessee called Bullet. And funny thing, after I made four sides, they went out of business. <laughs> But then later I went with another company and I stayed with them for a very long time and finally to the company that I'm with now, I've been with them for about 20, almost 21 years. So it started from being a disc jockey and playing around in the area. It's, it's, I'll tell you the truth, it's, as far as I'm concerned, there's no end to what you can do with this instrument. And there's very few people that I've found that really mastered them. But I want to ask you, if you walked into maybe your friend's apartment, or if you walked into a club someplace and you heard something went like this, What you think of? Thank you. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Thank you. <laughs>
through the day. I can't hold on much longer, people. Living this way, yes. I need my baby. People, I ain't lying. You see, if I don't hurry up and find my baby, I think I'm going out of my mind. I walked my bedroom floor, hung down my head and cried. I didn't exactly have the blues. I just wasn't satisfied. I need my baby. People ain't lying. You see, if I don't hurry up and find my baby, I think I'm going out of my mind. My head's in misery. My heart's in a sling. I'm a walking doctor, Bill people. My whole life is full of pain. Yes, I need my baby. People, I ain't lying. You see, if I don't hurry up and find my baby, I tell you, I think I'm going out of my mind.
someone really cares. Guess who? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Give me a little of that piano over there. You know, 
Someone asked me a little earlier, they said, B, why do you call your guitar Lucille? Well, I thought I might tell you if you really want to hear it. Do you really want to hear it? Or you don't want to hear it? You do want to hear it? All right, we'll do it then. Now, long time ago, a long time ago, before most of your parents was born, we used to play this place called Twist, Arkansas. We used to play there every Friday and every Saturday, and Sundays too if it rained, because if it rained, the people didn't have to work the next day. And the boss there told us we could play there anytime we didn't have any other place to play. So you know what that meant? We played there all the time because we didn't have no other place to play. But it used to get quite cold and twist during the winter time. They used to set this great big pail, look like a garbage pail. They'd sit it in the middle of the floor, half fill it with kerosene. They'd like that fuel and then that's what we use for heat. Now everybody usually would dance around this big container, you see. At that time, they used to dance real close together, like, you know. And they'd dance around this container and never disturb it. But one night, two guys got a little bit toe down. Maybe that's not a good word. Maybe I should say inebriated. That's not a good word either. Well, maybe they got just a little bit tipsy. Somebody in the band say he got drunk. <laughs> anyway, they start to fight. One of them knocked the other one over on this container and it spilled on the floor. Now, it was already burning. So when it spilled on the floor, it looked like a big river of fire. And everybody started making it for the front door, including B.B. King. But when I got on the outside, I remembered that I'd run off and left my guitar, so I went back for it. You see, in 49, it was hard to keep a good guitar. Today, they call, you, call it ripping you off for it. But back then, they would borrow it without your permission, you know what I mean. Like that, you usually don't get them back. So I went back for my guitar. Almost lost my life trying to save my guitar. The next morning we found these two guys that was fighting that was fighting about a lady. Now I didn't meet the lady, but I hear that her, her name was Lucille. So I named my guitar Lucille to remind me never to do a thing like that again. That's why I called my guitar Lucille. Do you like the little story? Now you know why we call it Lucia. Thank you. Thank you so much. We thank you. All right. Thank you.
you. We visit our tennis sacks in the Senegal. Senegal. Thank you. We visit the maestro, Mr. Calvin Owens. Calvin Owens. Thank you. Thank you so much. We thank you. And go shopping instead. Oh, I said I've got a good mind to give up. And go shopping instead to pick out me a tombstone. Oh, and be pronounced dead. When I read your letter this morning, baby. That was in your place in bed. Oh, when I read your letter this morning, baby, that was in your place in bed. The letter read, it's no use you looking for me, baby, or ever hoping to get me back. She said, it's no use, no use you looking for me, baby. Are ever hoping to get me back because it's all over now, baby.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're so kind. Thank you. Have you been having a little fun? Lucille don't hear so good. May I hear it again? Have you been having a little fun? All right, all right. I came home one evening a little late. Now listen to me. My lady had been telling me, she said, B, it gets kind of lonesome here when you're not here. So when you get off of work, when you get off of work at night, don't stay out so late. And I said, okay. So I stopped by the bar, had a couple with some of my friends. I really didn't think I was staying out as late as I was, so when I got home, she was kind of mad. Well, maybe that's not a good word. She was sort of angry. How about that? Well, she didn't like it. You know what I mean. So she said, if you stay out late like this again, next time I'm going to leave. You're going to have it by yourself. So a few nights later, I didn't really challenge her or anything like that. I was just tired and I stopped by the bar. Started talking with a couple of friends. And they usually have some nice long tales to tell. You, you fellas know what I'm talking about, don't you? So I had one. Then I had two. And after a while, I forgot about how many I had. Kind of lost track of time. You know, that, you know how that happened. And then all of a sudden, it hit me. You better go home. So I started jogging home. Can you imagine seeing me? When I got home, I found a note. And she wasn't there. The note went like, it read like this. The drill has gone away. Drill has gone, baby. The drill has gone away. You done me wrong, baby. And you're gonna be so someday. The thrill has gone away from me. The thrill has gone, baby. The thrill has gone away from me.